Yeah. Yeah, but it'll come in handy for blasting. Guys coming? We ought to be here soon. Let's get this stuff under cover. Oh, this is heavy. How'd you ever lift it alone? I eat the right kind of breakfast cereal. Firecrackers. Be grateful he didn't get us. Go no, Mary, wait. He'll be back for his balloon any minute.
to live and live through that. <laughs> Try if you can reach them on your radio. Steve, can you hear me? Right then, I hear you. Is everybody all right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. If we ever make it through this Chinese New Year. You really think you can make it? I think so. The wind ought to take us pretty close to the spaceship. Good. We'll get right back there. Well, you heard him. We better take the firecrackers with us. I'm gonna let this air out. Put it right there, Fitz. Steve, do you read me? Over. All of a sudden, we're going against the wind. Louder, Steve, I can't hear you. It's fading away. Yeah. It should be getting closer, not fading away. We use the ship's radio. It's more powerful.
Get rid of these that are lighting the load. No, don't be in a hurry to dump them. We may need them. Steve, come in. Come in, Steve. They've lost contact. Thanks for the news, Fitz Huey. Is there no way to boost the power? What do you think I'm working on now? What time does your watch say? traveling about two hours. So? Remember that giant map we looked at a couple of months ago? Yeah. It covered a thousand mile area from east to west. Did you see a body of water on it? I don't remember any, no. That means we can travel off of that. thousand miles in two hours. That's, that'd be over 500 miles an hour. Where are you now, Steve? I wish I knew. We're over an ocean of some kind. And we figure we've been traveling about 500 miles an hour. 500 miles an hour against the wind in a balloon? I know, I know. Don't ask me how. Look, we've, we've got to figure out where we're heading. I thought maybe you could patch into flight control at Central Airport. Maybe we'll get some idea. Call a giant flight controller. The man is mad. The man is desperate. Flight controller pilot, I have your signal. What is your flight number? I don't have a flight number. Listen, mister, every aircraft has a flight number. We've got no time up here for playing games. I'm not playing games. I'm lost, and I need your help. What is your location and your destination? I'm over what looks like an ocean. Does that help? An ocean? Are you sure? I mean, it's not a river or a lake. I mean an ocean. I can look to the horizon for a hundred miles in each direction. Nothing but water. Listen, mister, you better make a 180 degree turn fast, or you're a goner. Why? Every schoolboy knows about the Sea of Storms. Where'd you study your geography? Look, I need help, not criticism. Why am I a goner if I continue west? Because no one who's ever crossed that ocean has ever returned. No one. Just turn back. What do we tell the captain? The truth.
deep. Hello. What's happening? I don't know. I can't raise them. This is the power again. Oh, not this time. Oh, something else. Some outside force is cutting off all reception. At least we've passed those mountains. There's nothing but clouds down there. Listen, Viva! The wind has stopped. Let's hope so. We're losing altitude awfully fast. Are we gonna crash? We're gonna come down pretty hard. Get a good grip. Stranger, no more lights. Did you blank out a whole city? It's pitch black everywhere you look. Why don't we use one of those firecrackers for a flare? Oh, no, let's not risk that. Just captured. He will keep our prisons and I won't do it to. The tray. What is this object? Surely you must know. It came from your country across the seas. It's obviously a common object, judging by the number I've obtained. What is it used for? Look, who are you? What do you want with us? My name is Titus, and I'm the absolute ruler of this land. You will therefore answer my questions. This is obviously a weapon of some sort. How is it used? And this thing you carry with you is also a weapon, isn't it? It's just a firecracker. Firecracker? 
The word has an ominous sound. Fire destroys. Oh, it's nothing more than a child's toy. You simply light it at one end and it goes off with a sharp noise, that's all. A harmless child's toy. Very well, we shall soon find out. Give me fire. <laughs> What is this war? Why should we answer your questions? We're telling you nothing. Very well. I shall give you some reasons. Bring him here. What is your name? He won't tell us a thing, Master. Bring a column. You shall soon see how we change a reluctant prisoner to a willing one. What is your name? I assure you, your family will not necessarily be punished for your misdeeds. Where do you live? Responds in a different way to the collar. Others have to be rendered unconscious four or five times before they cooperate. This Andros, I'm afraid, will be a stubborn case. As for you, my little friend, I doubt that I'll be needing miniature collars for you. There are other persuasions I can use. Like what? Oh, the same forces that brought these articles to me across the seas. The force that drew you here, they can be used in other ways, you know. For example.
no more games about answering questions. Next time I will cut the fowl and one of you is high in the air. The truth now. What's this used for? It's called a thimble. Y you put it on your finger to protect it from the needle when you're sewing. Put it on. <laughs> I can't. It's too big. So I see. And what is this? Those are eyeglasses. You put them on to help you see better. Put it on. Well, obviously, they're too big for me. Obviously, you're lying. Can't you see these things were made for people your size and not ours? More lies. Do you own such things? Of course we do. You admit it. But not that size. They're too big for us. Well, anyone can see that. If you think we came from a land of people our size, we did. But that was another planet, far away from here, not just across the sea. Lies, I've had enough of them for one night. I will get the truth from you tomorrow, or I will kill you one by one. <laughs> there? A balloon, of course. Well, what'd you do? I've abandoned the park. Great personal risk, I might add. All right, what do you have in mind, Pitcher? Well, if we can blow it up, we can follow their balloon. Oh, that's pretty wild. Have you established radio contact with them yet? No. Can you think of a better way to find them? Better than doing nothing. All right, Pitchu. What do you know about aerodynamics? Oh, ho, ho. At county fairs, I, Alexander B. Pitchu, have made innumerable ascents in hot air balloons. Ladies and gentlemen, step up and observe the great aerial artist, Alexander B. Pitchu, the greatest attraction. All right, all right, all right, Pitchu. Look, spare me the gory details. I gotta get back to work on the radio. All I need is a little supply of hot air.
We hit a dead end. This must be his power source. Well, what is the power? Magnetism? I don't think so. It attracts non-metallic as well as metallic. Well, what is it then? Well, there's a force of attraction between any two bodies. You know, we don't even have that. My watch has stopped. Mine has too. We better get out of here. This stuff could be lethal. Lethal? <laughs> you that, I don't doubt. But as a nervous amateur, and a word to the wise. Trust me, didn't I mastermind this whole operation? The big hose, the sardine can, the ballast. Yes, Fitzhugh, that you did. And if it works, you get the full credit. Somebody said it couldn't be done. But I would have chucked it with my budget. take fouls until the show's over. You almost blew the whole thing. Sorry. Let me handle it. Get some more ballast. It doesn't need any more air. Amateurs. It does need more air, in my opinion. <laughs> This does help me to see better. Now you know we were lying. I know no such thing. You might have constructed this lodge for some special purpose of your own. Why don't you face the truth? The people across the sea are as big as you are. And they're a lot more advanced in certain respects. I don't believe it. We can prove it. Prove it! You release the woman and the boy. They'll get the proof and send it back. You. The one called Steve, you will go. The rest of you will stay. It took a little bit less than half this time to get you here. You have all of it to make the trip both ways. You have until the sand runs down. If you're not back by then, I hereby decree your friends will be killed. <laughs> Technology of sorts. Yeah, anything else? I'll need some. 
some explosives, powerful enough to build a very big bomb. Now you and Fitz, you have that stuff there when I land. And be ready to come back with me. Right, but what about the others? They're being held as hostages. That's why we have to hurry. Right. We'll give it a go. I'll get Fitz you. <laughs> that I have no desire to harm any of you. He's trying to trap her. She won't tell him anything she doesn't want him to know. With a push of the button, I can raise you up in the air and drop you to the ground. If you don't answer my questions, I will do it. You can deprive yourself of your only source of information. You a source of information? Little women do talk ties. Even little women. But they don't tell the truth if they're forced to. Go back to the others. Won't budge. Then I just passed that ocean. Be there soon. Good. We're in SID headquarters now. But we have to blow it. Nothing ever comes easy to you. Okay, Fitz, you can put the gun by right now. This man you call Mark, are you telling me there is nothing unusual about him? Yes, sir. He's just an ordinary man. Then assuming one of you four had to die. To die? You agree it might as well be the one called Mark? Not Mark. Why not? He's just an ordinary man. He's a genius. I suppose if one of us had to die, I didn't want to be misleased. Mark? A genius, you say? Yes, sir, a real genius. You can't kill him. Can't I? Maybe he could even help you. He's a scientist. He's a great one. You're a stupid boy. But you've been of great help to me. Andrews, take this man out of here. I thought you were a man who didn't take orders, Andrews. Anytime you're ready. my questions. The one you call Steve, I've been thinking about him. He agreed too readily to my sending away in the balloon instead of the one of the boy. He has a plan to trick me, hasn't he? There's no plan. What is the plan? There is no plan.
one so small could be so stubborn. Parachutes for you ever try to jump without one? You could get hurt that way. Instruments tell me the balloon is not yet up in the air for the return journey. He is up to something. I shall not destroy the one called Mark, of course. He will be too valuable to me once I have conditioned him. But as for you too, much as I have grown to respect you, it will be necessary to kill you.
tied it up. What are you talking about? It's rough weights a ton. Well, if the balloon has all the weight, fits you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> just make it in time to save you. The most interesting race with time. If we reach here before the sand has run out, you will be spared. If not... Titus, listen. Steve's on his way now. What difference could a few grains of sand make? I have taken an oath. My whole kingdom is built on obedience. There can be no exceptions has come down to a race against time. And with two lives in the balance, the stakes are high. We stopped. We'll be going down soon. All set? Yeah. Do you know how to find the place? I think so. Good. Let's go. Hand me the explosives. See you there. Fits you up. Come on. Closer from there. Oh. Ah, too bad the time's run out. pictures for you. You better take a good look at them.
size, but not ours. Now, this should be interesting to you. Just notice the weapons they've got to destroy you. Take a better look. distance missiles. With those weapons, the people back there can fire across the sea and wipe you out in a single attack. How can you be sure that these things called missiles will do what you say they do? I help build similar ones back on Earth. And you will build them for me. Well, that'd take years. You will be here for years. You will be here forever. to help me. The rest of you I will kill now. Let them alone. How dare you. Seize him! Well, I see you both need a good jolt to bring you to your senses. I'm afraid. Poor Andros. We owe him a debt of gratitude. By this time tomorrow, we should be back in camp. Tomorrow? That's a long time to spend stuck in this balloon. You're complaining. <laughs> 